This is Community Forum, a public affairs presentation of McKenzie River Broadcasting. Each week, we learn about issues affecting our community with your host, Tracy Berry. Mark your calendars for Sunday morning, October 23rd, outside Autzen Stadium, headed into Alton Baker Park. It's going to be the second annual Komen Eugene Race for the Cure. Huge event, raises money and awareness in the battle against breast cancer, celebrates breast cancer survivors, honors those as well who've lost their battle with the disease. We had a great turnout last year, even though there was a torrential downpour during the entire event. A lot of happy people, very committed to the cause. So so all the planning now well underway and the website is all ready to take your registration. And Mackenzie River Broadcasting, a proud media sponsor of the event. Chris McDonald is our guest this morning. She's the Chief Executive Officer with Coleman, Oregon. Chris, thanks so much for being with us this morning. I understand you're promising sunshine and 80 degrees for this year's uh, event in Eugene after last year's We'll see what we can <laughs> do. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> it was it was amazing, though. It was pouring down rain last year for the inaugural event, but the spirits of the people who were there, it was just tremendous energy. I've never seen so many happy, wet people, honest to goodness. <laughs> I mean, there was such um, a spirit of joy that day, and it, the rain wasn't really even a factor. So, I mean, for most people, so it was great. And I want to say, folks, if you weren't at the event, you can go to... Uh, uh, on your web, you can go to comanoregon.org. That's K-O-M-E-N, Oregon, all one word, dot O-R-G. And when you click for the Eugene event and just click through the different subheadings, you've got some hysterical photos of everyone, uh, the drown rats with the smiles, basically. Absolutely. So, In costumes, some of them. Yeah, that's true. They were. It, it was difficult to describe to people who'd never seen an event like this what it's like. But, uh, I mean, we've seen coverage in some of the other cities, Portland and the like. But Eugene, it, it stayed true to form. Talk about that, Chris. Very unique. And I think what's really exciting is to see uh, the variety of, of creativity that people bring bring to race events. You know, a lot of empowerment uh, kind of costumes and also fun and frills and and uh, glitter, a lot of glitter. But it really, it's, it's a way to celebrate um, surviving the disease and thriving with the disease and um, really... Um, Taking some joy in sometimes what is a very difficult um, and hard and hard a disease for a family to face. Well, let's talk about uh, what's happening with this year's event because, of course, you've set a date. It's going to be on Sunday, October twenty third, mm-hmm. and once again, everyone's going to meet outside Autzen Stadium mm-hmm. to do the different routes. But where are we at right now with the planning? Well, we are in in full speed going forward as fast as we can with this event. And you know, in a second year, you you learn a lot from the first year. And one of the things that we did learn was. Um, we were going to make it easier for folks to get to the venue. So we were going to have two shuttle buses from two different locations. So that will enable some some streamlining of the event. Also, we're changing the route just ever so slightly. So it we will we learned about um, doing an event in a new venue. And so working with local folks here to really get a really great experience for our guests. Yeah, you know an event's doing well, I guess, when you do have a traffic jam at Odark 30 on Sunday morning. It, it was uh, the largest inaugural event you've it was had, it think. was the largest inaugural event that Komen has ever had for us for a race for a ra- in the race series. So we were really excited about that. That is pretty impressive. Uh-huh. And yeah, the the route it was interesting because there were so many people. Mm-hmm. You did quickly find out where some of the choke points were on the route. So it's it's nice that you've been able to. I was actually on the website looking, and it looks like you've got it spread out a little mm-hmm. more, so paths aren't crossing and people aren't having to jostle quite as much. Because there are some very competitive runners and walkers out there. There are, and spacing the events far enough apart is really key. Uh, so that's one of the things we learned. The other new thing for this year is we're, we're going to have a survivor tribute, a formal ceremony before the, the large race. And it, it's a place to really honor the women and men who have been affected by this disease. So uh, it'll be a formal ceremony in the festival area beforehand. And so that's a new feature as well this year. That's going to be very, very moving. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of local participation with that, of course. And and you do have the separate survivor area. Mm-hmm. And, and talk about that, because that is something that I, I know is very profound for a lot of folks taking part. So I think one of the most important things for survivors is to understand that they're not alone. And I think one of the great things about Race for the Cure across the country and now the world is to see that this disease really affects a lot of people and seeing other people in pink and knowing that you're not in it alone. And so Survivor City, the area inside Mm -hmm. or or the Survivor Tent, is a place where people can come and and get um, some food that's not available to other folks and a nice little goodie bag and really to kind of talk to their coast people that are surviving the disease with them and and really just gain support and really to celebrate that they are 
um, here with us, and they are thriving with the disease. I found it fascinating when I was uh, walking around before and after the the race last year and just talking to people, and, and I would just simply say to people, why are you here? And the stories, some people were survivors, others family members, friends, co-workers, but everyone had a story, even if they just heard about the event and didn't have a direct tie with someone. It, it was it was really remarkable. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's key. Breast cancer is personal. Um, I have my own story. My mother and my younger sister are both survivors. And so this is really important to me for that. And also I have two daughters. I have two teenagers. And I really don't want them to have to deal with the, the devastation of this disease. But the thing about Komen is you don't really know Komen until you kind of get to talk to us a little bit more. We're not just a race for the cure and event. We surround this disease from early detection to treatment um, to helping survivors to thrive. And I think that's what people need to understand. And Komen's model is so unique because we are governed by a local board of directors and the money that we invest throughout the state is really goes to the most important uh, priorities uh, that our local um, organization sees to fund. And so for us locally, there's some funding that actually was set up last year, but is continuing this year. Talk about that a bit. Sure. Well, Komen has existed for 20 years in Oregon. And so we've funded programs throughout the state for 20 years. So before Komen was even a race for the cure in Eugene, just by way of example, for 10 years, we've been able to fund just in Lane County, uh, actually for the last five years, Mm -hmm. about 2,600 mammograms for uninsured women. And so, you know, the benefit of that. Um, has really existed, and that will continue. We have a very large uh, grant program throughout the state. It's a competitive process in which nonprofits um, are are seeking our funds for education programs for early detection and also survivor support, patient navigation, things of that nature. In the state, we have a new program that we're calling SCREEN. We've broken the state up into seven different areas, the mid Willamette is a priority for us because of some statistics that we found with late stage diagnosis. So late stage diagnosis usually has to do with either lack of education or lack of access. So we have a five year grant with Samaritan Health uh, for $300,000 over the next five years to do education about early detection in 11 different communities. That can make a big difference. I know that also you, you have the I am the cure. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice thing where people basically say they're going to take care of themselves and be more aware of that. Talk about that if you could. Well, I think what happens is with breast cancer being such a um, visible disease in the media, there's a lot of uh, studies that come out. But really at the end of the day, you need to know what's normal for you. So I am the cure is a program that just has some really key um, proof points in terms of Know what's normal for you. Get screened. Know your family history. Yeah, just uh, live right. <laughs> Good that's right. It's a healthy lifestyle. Else, that's the, that's the fourth one. You know, there's a lot of uh, guidelines around when you should be screened, and and Komen has been really consistent in, in that. Over 40, you should you should be screened, and earlier if you do have a family history. But there used to be some, uh, you know, do a monthly self breast exam. But Komen is evidence based, and the evidence didn't play out. To, to say that that was, that was scientifically um, proven, mm-hmm. but knowing what's normal for you, even if you check on a, nor- uh, a monthly basis, that's what's going to save your life. Yeah, it's true because uh, as women, we are the ones who really were kind of acquainted with these and, and deal with our breasts every day. Yeah, see your doctor and learn your risk, get mammograms and breast exams, notice the changes to your breasts, and start the fight by living right. I like the way that last one kind of rhymes as well. But but it is good good stuff. I have uh, I have friends who've, who've fought and survived breast mm-hmm. cancer, also an aunt as well, and, uh, and they've all been very hands-on in dealing with things uh, from the diagnosis onward. And they were pretty conscious, conscientious about their health as well mm-hmm. prior to that. But that is just such a personal personal responsibility. I think a lot of folks, I've, I've, I have a friend who um, just finished a marathon and then the next week was diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh. And her husband said, you can't have breast cancer. You just ran a marathon. Well, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. It, it doesn't work that way. I mean, you can still make all the right choices and live the healthy lifestyle but it's about detecting it early. We know when we started the foundation 30 years ago, the five-year survival rate was just 74%. We're now at 98% if you find it early. I mean, that's a huge difference. If you put it off and you let things go or you don't know, you're not aware, late-stage diagnosis, you only have a 23% chance of a five-year survival. So you have the 23 on the late and the 98 on the early, you know. 
it's up to you. That's pretty dramatic. You, mm-hmm. you think about it, the attitudes, just even in the last generation or two, have changed so much toward breast cancer. I mean, people didn't really say the word breasts <laughs> much right. in public to start with, uh, even a generation, generation and a half ago. But uh, the awareness and the fact that it is discussed, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing for women's health. It is. And I think for younger women, too. I mean, uh, you know, we often hear stories of, I'm too young to get breast cancer. And a lot of times the younger women will speak about it and empower their mothers, their aunts, their grandmothers, especially in different cultures. But we just last year had two young women at the University of Oregon in a sorority that were 21 years old that were diagnosed. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, you don't think that that can happen, but it does happen. And so um, we of- we often advocate or we do advocate for women to, if you know something's wrong, get that answer. The watch and wait, sometimes it's not, you get that second opinion. Um, if you think something's wrong, you need to be your best advocate. I was just thinking that uh, one of the folks who's who's a real face this year for for the local Komen Race for the Cure is is Catherine Chicola, who yeah. has spent her career just studying breast health, mm-hmm. and and she's very entertaining when you speak with her about it too. Mm-hmm. She she does some 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 great discussions, but it's nice to have her involved in it this year. Yeah. Dr. Chicola is also on our local medical advisory committee, which is made up of, of physicians, oncologists, radiologists, surgeons from across the state. And we're very happy that she's on that committee and an active participant. That committee um, informs some of our program development across the state, and we're happy to have her on that committee. You also have the Lura Vieres from the mm-hmm. University of Oregon community, mm-hmm. the President Richard and his wife, Jan, and, mm-hmm. and they've been involved in a lot of events the last few years. You know, I was so touched by the La Rivieres because... Um, their story, again, is so personal. His um, younger sister is a three-time survivor, and she's, and she's young. And, and so it's, it's just her grace and the way she um, held herself, I just was very impressed by, by his sister and, and by the love that they have for each other. And um, they're just, it's, again, a real personal story. If you're just joining us, good morning. You're listening to Community Forum from Mackenzie River Broadcasting. Tracy Berry along with Chris McDonald from Komen, Oregon. The big race for the cure coming up again this fall. The second annual one here in Eugene outside Autzen Stadium into Alton Baker Park. It's going to be on Sunday morning, October 23rd. We're, uh, we can't promise there won't be rain, but we're pretty sure it won't be the monsoon that uh, that we had last year. Although it was still a terrific event. Uh, registration and teams, they're forming now, Chris. Absolutely. You can get all good information on forming a team or registering as an individual on our website, Komen, Oregon. And this year we have a lot of new tools to help with fundraising. And you know, race registration gets us to the start line, but fundraising is really what's going to make the difference. And we are so, um, we are so blessed with our corporate sponsors and others that are supporting the race, but really fundraising and awareness is the, the, why we have Race for the Cure. So this is something where uh, maybe you were involved last year, maybe not, but you just talked about it. Uh, your company, you and your friends, it's time to start talking and not just talk, but go to the website, www.comanoregon, all one word, dot O-R-G. And so they'll get on the website and it's pretty easy to sign up. Very easy to sign up. And once you sign up, it's, it's a very nice feature. Um, uh, a personalized web page will be uh, created for you and which is nice. very cool and you can personalize it you can put your own pictures up there and share your story and we find people that really share their story can motivate others um, to you know give that five ten twenty five dollars and really that will make a difference um, in the lives here locally so the idea is basically you create your own custom web page when you register, and then you can share that link mm-hmm. with friends, family, coworkers, anyone you've ever met in your entire Absolutely. life. Absolutely, and much. we also have a really cool Facebook feature for those of you who are Facebook. Oh, nobody fans. uses Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of cool because it, it puts a thermometer on your page, and every time someone makes a gift on your behalf, it shows up on your on your um, newsfeed. And so we found a lot of people had success with that last year, and it was really fun because you know you can egg your friends on to say you know, give up your latte today and give that $5. (laughs) We had actually um, an intern in our office who had just graduated from college and she ended up raising well over $1,300 from her broke college buddies, you know, just giving the ones and $2 because, you know, they saw how impassioned she was about the cause and, and, you know, they, they felt, um, they felt energized by her passion for what was going on. It's always interesting how uh, the giving up your latte for the day is always used as sort of the, the gold standard for that. But, but I'm sure that everyone in their life has some, little thing like that and maybe it's an indulgence maybe you don't even think about it but but you can make a real difference with that or just just plan that you're going to donate and you know the fun thing is we did something at our office this past week Uh, we had a good old-fashioned bake sale 
nice. at our office in in Portland, and we had our staff brought in things. We got some donations from a local bakery, and we raised six hundred dollars. And we've heard so many fun stories of a, a car wash, a dog wash, a, you know, uh, collecting cans. And it's something we often have times um, darling children come in to our office who have collected cans or done a garage sale with their coins. And it's, you know, it truly is a way everyone can get involved with raising money. Well, and it's it's worth noting that even if you're not on a team, even if you just individually want to sign up, you can do that as well at the, mm-hmm. at the website. Or mm-hmm. if you want, the website will just give you information if you need to do it by mm-hmm. mail for whatever reason. But but certainly there are a lot of options. And, and if you want to be involved in the Race for the Cure, mm-hmm. no, no obstacles to that No obstacles. All. In fact, if you don't even want to show up, we have Sleep In for the Cure. I was going to ask you yeah. about that. Okay, so so this is called Sleep In for the Cure, mm-hmm. and there are people right now going, hey. Yeah, <laughs> so sounds good. Explain. Well, basically what it is, it's a way to support uh, Komen and the Race for the Cure. You will get the same, um, not the same experience, but the same goodies as if you were here. You do get a race T-shirt and the ability to participate with fundraising, and we'll mail that to you after the race. So you could um, conceivably just, and and do you get the t-shirt before or after you sleep in? After. Oh, okay, because then you'll just have to save it. So next year you can, yeah, upload the photo of you snoozing the shirt to your Facebook page as you encourage people. I love that, and I think there are some people who are gonna like that as well, but but you don't get quite the same as the walking and running and things like that. Right, and I think that the fun thing is just the, the environment that's so positive. We also want people along the route to have a positive um, experience. So we do have entertainment. Last year, I think we had six or seven different groups, local groups that were providing entertainment. And our Cure Leaders, which is part of the I Am The Cure program, which are local, usually younger mm-hmm. younger folks who are chanting educational messages and really encouraging the runners and congratulating the survivors along the route. Let's talk about the different uh, types of routes that we have for people because you do have a number of options for folks registering. We do. We have, for the hardcore folks, we have a chip time, which is a 5K. Uh, We have an untimed co-ed run and the 5K walk as well. And for those of, of, of you who don't feel like you can walk that far, either you're in active treatment or you have very young children, we have a family walk that's just a mile. So all of those activities are on our website. And Family so Walk is a great group, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> and another thing people often get confused about is you can be on a team and you can all do separate events. That's oh. not a problem. You don't have to run, walk, or sleep in together. You can do a variety of things together. So you could have the hardcore chip runners who are on your team. You know, they're, they're, they're checking their watches mm-hmm. of time and everything, but you could sleep in or just do the family one. Absolutely. We want to make it easy. That's a that's a great idea. Uh, one thing that, that struck me, and we were talking about the family walk, but even in some of the other events, I, I was seeing men and women of a couple of generations, three generations, just extended families that mm-hmm. were showing up for that. It, it was it was really wonderful. It's, it's, you know, what happens with Race for the Cure, it, it becomes a tradition, either celebrating, you know, the survivorship of someone or, and unfortunately, the passing of someone. And it's a way for people to get together and really memorialize the importance of family and, and loved ones in our lives and to really put into action making a difference. And I think that is a good point you brought up because while we are honoring the survivors, there are those who, who have left us in the last year or years. And so do you want to talk a little bit more about that and how people kind of observe that? Well, absolutely. You know, uh, we in our own affiliate had a, a situation this past year. We lost a board member who was 37 and she had been diagnosed when she was 27. She'd been very active in our affiliate and, um, you know, race was something that she held dear to her um, family, and it was a tradition for them, and she raised quite a bit of money for us and advocated for young survivors, and that really hits home, and um, we do celebrate survivors, but we still are losing women, and the promise of a full life is something Komen wants to bring forward. Um, Finding it early is so important, but even finding it early, we're finding that some forms of breast cancer are so aggressive that that's why we need the research to address these individual subtypes of breast cancer that are being found and identified even in the last few years. Interesting. And uh, we should mention that you can get a lot of information on the research and a lot of other educational information, both on the website and, and even at the race. If Absolutely. You stop by any of the booths. And our website has a lot of information about local resources and what we're doing here in Oregon, but we link to our national website, komen.org, K-O-M-E-N.org, that has so much information um, across the spectrum of breast cancer. 
and it's another great place to go. You are also looking for volunteers because it takes a lot of wonderful people to help put on an event of this size. We are. We we use about three to 400 volunteers, and you can go on our website. There is an online application form with different times so you can pick what works for you. We often have people help us even in the setup uh, beforehand um, for the t-shirt pickup, which is going to be held at the Hilton. And so we there's lots of spots throughout the weekend to help. There are a lot of sponsorship opportunities as well, a lot of businesses that mm-hmm. really get involved in this. And then there's still time to sign up for some there of is, that. There is. And it's a great community, um, a, a way to show the community how you support this activity. And we've been so I'm happy with the the um, the great turnout we've had for sponsors, but there is still there's always room for sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> it is the second annual Komen Race for the Cure. It's coming up in Eugene on Sunday, October 23rd. It starts in the morning, where it will be sunny and gorgeous this year. We hope, and even if it's raining, the smiles are going to be terrific. Uh, key elements, other things that uh, we should be telling folks about. I think the race is really an active way to get involved and make a difference. It's fun. Uh, Many of your neighbors will be here, so you should come say hi to them. (laughs) But it's also a way to really bring to the forefront that breast cancer does affect um, families. It affects women that may not even think that they would be affected because they don't have a family history. But people get breast cancer. 85% of women who are diagnosed have no family history. So those key points of know what's normal for you, get screened, and um, lead a healthy lifestyle is really what you can do to... um, to arm yourself against this disease. All right. Once again, the website, www.komen, K-O-M-E-N, Oregon. That's Komen, Oregon, all one word, dot O-R-G. You can get specific information on the Eugene event by clicking on the Eugene event when you get to that page and all sorts of information about Komen in general. Uh, Final thoughts, anything you want to add? I think the beautiful part about Komen is um, how we are organized is we are meeting needs locally and that the money that's raised here is going to be um, um, invested locally, but also goes to research that is affecting the whole community of breast cancer survivors around the world. Chris McDonald, thanks so much for being our guest this morning on Community Forum. Thank you. Community Forum is a public affairs presentation of McKenzie River Broadcasting. If you have questions, comments, or your organization is interested in taking part in a future program, we'd like to hear from you. Send your letter to McKenzie River Broadcasting, Attention Public Affairs, 925 Country Club Road, Suite 200, Eugene, Oregon, 97401. Thanks for joining us. Tune in again next week.